So hello everyone on this crazy evening <laughs> um, of rain in the Bay Area. So again, I'm Minda Guhab and I'm here to teach the Mind Illuminated and it's a five part series we're doing over the next few months. We've already covered stages one through three in two sessions. And so today we're gonna cover stage four. And this is a really amazing stage. This is where TMI, the mind illuminated, really starts to separate itself from other kinds of teaching practices. I call the mind illuminated the Suzuki method of meditation. And the things you learn here in stage four has a lot to do with why, and I'll cover that in just a moment. But before we start, I just want to take a quick pause and to say what I like to say, that I bow down to all of you, all of you who are here, the very embodiments of pure love and the Supreme Self. Thank you. And welcome to San Francisco Dharma Collective. We strive to create a safe environment. If you feel the environment is not safe, please speak to a teacher or facilitator or board member about it. We take issues like this seriously and please us know if you want to connect with us on such issues. And also know that I will ask a lot of questions and it is optional to respond. If I call on you, you can say I decline and that is completely fine. It is good to have some um, uh, participation. So I do encourage you to, to share as you'll get so much out of this doing that. Okay, now I just wanna share with you my definition of meditation as we talk about it here in this course. So a lot of people think of meditation as the practice of watching the breath or clearing your mind. I would like to back away from that for a lot of people, that's not really an appropriate way of thinking about meditation. The most useful definition is what I find is now, well, I'll tell you this. The meditation is the intentional experience and exploration of reality. You can start with the breath as a meditation object, but other things can be meditation objects too. Okay, so I hope that's clear. The intentional experience and exploration of reality. That is what we are doing here with meditation. And what we are in the realm of is being here now. Right now. This is the realm that we're dealing with, is what's happening right here. Not the rainstorm. You're just, where are you sitting? What is happening right here? You're listening to my words, you're in front of a screen right now. The mind illuminated is both a shamatha and a vipassana practice, a yoked practice of concentration and insight meditation. And the way I like to frame this class is in terms of what can meditation do for leaders and creatives? And I'm interested in that question for many reasons and particularly with meditation, when you train your mind, you're training your instrument in leadership and creativity. That's why it's such an advantage if you have a lot of involvement with your leadership and creativity skills and roles in your life. This is an amazing way to make progress, to make things easier, to make your life more intentional in these areas. So, if you share, I would love for you to talk about those areas of your life. Optional, but really wanting to intend to help people with their leadership and creativity. Okay, so now we'll set some intentions for today. Stages four through six, we've entered a new realm. Earlier in stages one through three, we were in the realm of the novice meditator, brand new meditators. Now what we're covering are the guides for a skilled meditator. Now, anyone can listen to this class today, whether you are novice, skilled, or adept, which is an advanced practitioner. Okay, great, thank you, no problem. 
just a pause. <laughs> and let me just say that again. No problem. Um, with this class, think of stages four through six for when you are really able to stay on your breath for 10 to 15 minutes paying attention with no mind wandering. You might have some forgetting. And the difference between that is mind wandering is when your thoughts go all over the place. And forgetting is this when you have a blip. And then you come back. So this is when you're um, really able to take advantage of the tools that I'm going to introduce you to today and some of the concepts. So before we go into that, let's think about what you want out of today's practice. And so again, the six stages of prep are as follows. Setting your intention. What are your motivation and goals? So long-term is motivation. Why are you practicing? For peace of mind, to relieve suffering, or to discover higher things in reality in life? Um, there's a lot of different reasons people meditate. So your motivation and your goals for this session what do you want to learn and how would you like to meditate today? Because we will have a 15 to 30 minute meditation at the end of this class. Okay, so take a moment to consider that. And we will take a minute to meditate on this a little bit further, but I'm now calling out these six stages of prep. These steps really change your practice. So motivation and goals, always good to think, okay, what am I doing long-term and short-term? And then take a minute to reflect on your practice. Where do you feel challenged in your practice as related to anything with your specific practices sitting or even with your leadership and creative sides of your life? Excuse me. <coughs> Can I take a sip of tea? But where are you feeling challenged? And when it relates to leadership and creativity, where can these issues that you're having, whether you're all over the place or um, you're having a tough time developing or creating new things or dealing with a team, how might these things be related to your mind? And then finally, um, with your expectations and practice, set a specific attention to focus on today. Um, might be dullness, or maintaining awareness, learning awareness, what that is more deeply, or growing your mindfulness. There can be other intentions too. I'm just suggesting a few. Okay, um, those are the four of six steps, motivation, goals, expectations, and then diligence. What is your specific intention? And stay, really try to stick to it. And the last two will we'll go over right before we start meditating. That is dealing with distractions and your posture. And the posture I like to have is when you're sitting or even if you're sitting in a chair, um, even if you're standing, to have your back aligned like boulders on top of each other so you have no effort for keeping your back straight and comfortable and relaxed. Okay. So I just thought at the beginning of this new sets of stages, I would cover these basics. Really think about how useful they can be you, for you. Okay? Alrighty. So I'm gonna take a minute and reflect on these things, your motivation and what you'd like to get out of today. Starting now, one minute. And think of one word or phrase for the intention that you'd like to set for today.
Okay. So, um, Galen or Sebastian, would you like to introduce yourselves? And the way I'd ask is to share your name and a word or phrase for um, what you'd like to set as an intention today. And then finally, um, what brings you here during this crazy rainy day? I mean, <laughs> I know you're online, but you could be asleep. <laughs> so um, who would like to share? Galen, would you like to go? Hi, I'm Galen. Um... I saw this the other day online, um, so I thought I'd jump in. I live in the sunset, um, but uh, uh, just like really quick background, just discovered the mind eliminated like a month ago, and I've been like going through um, the practices, so still fairly new. Um, but I'd say my overall intention would be to explore the mind, and then goals for this session would be to settle on a rhythm. Okay. Do you want to tell me more what you mean by rhythm? I'm curious about that. Um, I think it, it currently I can stay pretty focused on the breath, but there's lots of kind of distractions from it. And um, I wonder if I can kind of find like a rhythm of allowing kind of distractions and kind of settling back on the breath and I guess mm. making that a little more um, less erratic maybe um. okay I got it I like how you say rhythm it almost feels like that's something that instinctively could um, help you to find a rhythm and that's interesting because yeah. it sounds like you've explored a little bit in your uh, meditation about what is going to help with distraction. Yeah. And that's really um, great. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna, uh, once again, it's still fairly new. So every single session is kind of exciting. <laughs> um, so, um, <laughs> awesome. very exploratory. <clears throat> oh, great. Okay, well, I think you'll find a lot of the things we talked about today. Um, specifically introspective awareness. So now we're going to go from just attention and awareness to different types of awareness. So there is introspective awareness where you're basically looking and peeking at your mind and seeing what it's doing. You can do that with your attention or your awareness. And when you're doing that with your awareness, obviously that's introspective awareness. Well, you have your attention, your breath, but you're still kind of noticing what's going on. So I want for you to notice, um, Galen, the difference between when you're seeing these insights or these observations appear in your mind from attention versus awareness. And what's again happening with attention at, you know, is you know, you're, you're using the mouse pointer of your mind to like pay attention to something and look at it closely. And it's different from when you're looking at it through awareness, because awareness is more contextual, it's relational. Um, the last time I talked in stage three about breath, we had following and connecting. And this is a similar idea. So with following, you're, you're using your attention to observe your breath and to stay with it. But with connecting, you're starting to use awareness a bit. Now you can use attention for connecting when you're comparing how your previous breath was like to the current breath but it can also occur in your awareness where you're just aware of a short breath and then a longer breath or a clipped breath and a relaxed breath, for example. Just notice the qualities of those things and you'll start to understand what introspective awareness versus attention feels like and you'll find some interesting insights from that. Okay, so this is a hint for you. And Seb, would you like to share? Um, I, I grabbed your name and I know you're in your car, so I just want to be attentive and um... yeah, that's, I got home <laughs> pulled over. Uh, yeah, this is Seb. Uh, I've I really enjoyed uh, the last last session. I'm actually a little under the weather today, so uh, ideally it would have been nice to come in, but uh, thank you for hosting this on Zoom. And um, and yes, uh, for the uh, for today's session, uh, I think that came to mind most was uh, uh, definitely. Uh, cultivating a confidence in, uh, in my practice and in, uh, you know, in my approach. And um, yeah, I've been 
been very interested in this for a number of years, but I still I still feel like you know st early stages. You know, I still I don't think I can. Yeah, I still mind wander uh, quite a bit. Um, so so yeah, just uh, you know to, to continue on and um, and just kind of see uh, you know what, what lies ahead maybe after after uh, where I'm at. But yeah, I appreciate it. Great. Well, you're here, and remember, our mind is a raging ocean. <laughs> It just is. That is just the nature of our mind. And so that we even get on our surfboard at all is amazing. Like that is already skill. So I want for you to feel good that you're here. You come here for a second time in a row. And this is where we are going to get those skills, just staying with the practice. So, oh, and there's some somebody who's come in and just would like to acknowledge um, <clears throat> the new person coming in. Um, when you have a moment, um, feel free to sit. So, um, yeah. Hello. Oh, okay. All right. No problem. Okay, so um, actually not a new participant. <laughs> so, um, all right. So let's go into what I want to share today. Now, I mentioned why is... Now, stage four, why is it such an amazing um, stage? Uh, the knowledge and practice and the skills of, of this of this particular part of the journey. Well, one of the things that people do when they meditate is they're using all of their attention to stay with their breath. It's attention, attention, attention. Awareness sometimes can be a very vague concept for a lot of people, and they don't really know what it is at this point. You're starting to explore it. <clears throat> That's why Gail and I said you should take a look at what attention versus introspective awareness looks like. Um, and I don't know if you find awareness to be something that is easy to grasp or challenging, but for a lot of people, it's quite challenging. <clears throat> now, if you can grasp holding your attention to your breath and at the same time feeling the context of everything else that's going on around, going from breath, breathing in, out, in, out, in, out, and car going by, breath, in, out, in, out, the warmth of this room, in, out. There's something that happens when you start to get uh, familiar and then um, skilled and then very comfortable with the attention and awareness practice happening together. Because really, like, your mind is using both all the time. And at times, it's like this little sliver of awareness and a lot of attention for a lot of people, especially around here in the Bay Area, where we have a lot of engineers using their attention in a very refined way. But then there are people who have the opposite, where awareness is what they're primarily um, using. That's kind of what I'm like, and a little sliver of attention. <laughs> So we're always using both. That's kind of problem. <clears throat> we can always cut. <laughs> and the um, thing with the, what I'm encouraging in this practice is to start to balance that out. So people who are more in awareness to start bringing in attention a little bit more. So you're like kind of more divided in this mindfulness uh, act, um, skill that we have or our capability. And people who are using primarily attention, let's discover awareness, see if you can bring more of it in. So again, that it's more balanced. And this is a journey. It's not going to be something that happens right away. So you're just going to start with discovering what is it to have more awareness? What is awareness? Some of you are going to ask. <clears throat> what happens when you start to balance out these two ways of looking at reality is that this overall mindness, or sati, as it's called in Buddhism, it actually expands out further. You grow your sati, your mindfulness, further out by practicing in this way, because it's kind of like blowing up a balloon. If you can get more of your awareness happening while you're paying more attention, it's like it's blowing up more attention throughout the balloon. <laughs> and same thing with attention. So um, what does that bring to mind for you, all of you? Like. Um, Gip or, or Sebastian, do you want to talk about um, 
what awareness is for you or what challenges you might um, find with what I'm suggesting? Um, sure, I'll uh, try and jump in. I think in my own meditation practice, I think I'm at the stage where I can kind of keep the breath in awareness the entire time, but sometimes it feels like it shifts kind of to the backstage. And uh, maybe that's the difference between awareness and focus is I feel, you know, like the, maybe the thoughts or the random thoughts that are coming in are like louder and in front of the breath, but I can still, like, I still kind of have, a, have a, like a faint recollection of um, the breath going in and out. And then sometimes it can like switch for me where I'm more aware of like the details of the um, sensations of the breath going in and out. And then I'm like still aware of like kind of random trains of thought in the background, but they're kind of dimmed. Um, and then if I don't have thoughts, I can generally, I guess, be more aware of like what it feels to be sitting on the mat and then like sounds happening around the room. Um, I guess that, that's like my personal experience so far. Um, and I'm not sure if that's... Okay. No, that's perfect. But, Actually, okay. what I love about you sharing that is you're really expressing what it's like to have both attention and awareness in your experience. That's perfect. And it sounds to me like you have a pretty strong grasp on awareness. So that's really good to know. So it's going to be pretty straightforward for you for you to continue and to grow your awareness by using your awareness to look at what's happening. <clears throat> so why don't um, you consider exploring that today, something you can consider, and that'll be um, experimenting with stage four practice today. Cool. Sepp, do you have anything you'd like to um, comment on? Yeah, the only thing um, uh, you mentioned, you know, a lot of people focus their attention. I, I feel exhausted at the end of the day, you know, especially doing really technical things for hours on end with just very focused attention. And uh, I feel I feel like my awareness brings a lot of really helpful insights. And uh, it's it's definitely, you know, I, uh, it, you know, it's something that uh, and it's an often restorative for me and kind of centering and balancing. So uh, I'd like to, you know, focus today on um, helping helping kind of bring that it's much more gentle and maybe not as directed and, you know, focused. And yeah, I like, uh, I like, I'd like to expand on, on the awareness side and not just be all attention for like, you know, 10 hours on end and then just, you know, zonked. <laughs> okay. That's great. So at first it again, sounds like you've a very clear grasp of awareness and it sounds like you're actually excited to just go into full awareness mode. And I love that. And I really want to encourage you to do that. It's a really great way to play. And to just, yeah, let's let go of the day, right? <laughs> so for um, those of you who may be listening to this recording, I just want to give you a little grasp of what awareness is if you're struggling with it. Again, just really think about the context that's happening around you while you're paying attention. And just imagine what it might be like for you to be able to notice um, that you're in a room, you are in a job. These can be things that don't have to be physical or visual. They can be auditory. They can even be just your thoughts of what's happening and, and observations of what you're noticing in the context that's around you. I'm going to try to come up with better ways to explain awareness, but I just wanted to acknowledge that there are people who don't really grasp it um, quite readily. And it's good for those of us who do to find good ways to explain it. Okay. So stage four. Let's go into this a little bit more. And my it looks like my computer's died. <laughs> oh wait, no, it's we're good. Um so what we're dealing with is um, getting away from overuse of attention to really this balanced sense of awareness and attention. And this helps us to grow, actually, 
a more stable attention. Believe it or not, what awareness does is it helps um, your attention know exactly what's good to pay attention to. So if you set an intention, as we did just now, of what we want our session and meditation to look like, awareness will hold that. And as your awareness gets stronger and more continuous, it will be able to direct attention back to your intention over and over again, like to your breath, paying attention to your breath and having that be continuous. So as every time you sit, you, t- you have this in your awareness and you set an intention doing these stick six step prep um, steps, this helps you grow that awareness. And it grows your attention. This allows you then to deal with subtle distraction and subtle dullness. So up until now in stages one through three, the distractions have been pretty obvious, gross distractions as we call it. You know, when someone you know, walks by or it starts talking or, you know, all these different kinds of obvious distractions, that's what you're dealing with. But as your awareness starts to grow and your attention starts to get more stable as you practice, these other distractions that were more under the surface start to emerge. Like in what just might be thoughts or even thoughts of thoughts, like um, even like a discomfort that you had like not noticed until now, a little slight anxiety. These are all sort of like under the surface of the obvious things. And one thing that can happen when you're practicing at this stage is your number of distractions actually grows. (laughs) You may feel like you're going backwards in your practice because you're noticing more distractions. You're like, I'm getting more distracted. Well, what might actually be happening is that you're just growing your awareness and there's more distractions that you're seeing that you weren't aware of before. You know, one thing I really love is there are roadmaps, lots of different roadmaps of what the meditation journey looks like. And the one we're doing right now is just one, stages one through 10 and the mind illuminated. But one uh, author who I really love, uh, Dan Ingram, in the core teachings of the Buddha, he basically outlines all of these stages of insight and all the different negative types of stages that can happen when you're making progress. So I want for you to feel encouraged. I, I maybe even take a look at that book if you want. But um, if you start to feel like your practice is getting more bad, <laughs> you're like, why can't I sit down? Why are things getting so hard? Well, that's actually just um, part of the progress. As long as your intention is to sit, your intention is to deal with distractions, you're good. You're okay. You're just noticing your awareness getting more strong. And that's awesome. So these are the things that I want for you to be aware of and notice as your awareness grows, how you're able to understand these subtle relationships a little bit more. You'll start seeing dynamics that you didn't really notice before and you'll even start to um, get insights or these large major things that come up in this stage where, you know, things from even your childhood or pain that you weren't even really paying attention to until now. Um, these purifications, these are like negative sort of big distractions that can be even about the story of your life. They start coming up and it's very profound because they're often dealing with very deep things, kind of like the things you deal with if you're someone who's in, in therapy, right? Or is just dealing with big relationship issues. Totally normal because you're becoming more aware. And these things, they affect your life. And I'm talking to you as someone who also trained um, in developmental psychology. So those are the things that we're often dealing with in therapy and, you know, when we're working with um, you know, others or relating to others. And it's a really great opportunity. So if you start to experience those things, don't shrink away from them. But what you're going to do to deal with them Um, Other than, you know, there's lots of different ways in the outside world to deal with, you know, issues. But when you're in your meditation session, 
you're just going to stay with the awareness and attention of your breath. And I want for you to look and seek the pleasure and joy that is in this experience. Even waking up to purification can be a great thing because it's it's like, you know, you're you're just getting better at life. I mean, the way you'll get better at life is just noticing things that you're needing to deal with as obstacles. These are good things. And this is, in a way, I would say it's like a, it is a form of therapy. I mean, there weren't always psychology and, um, you know, this type of practices around for people. And so this is something you can use to um, look at the things in your life. And it's really a wonderful thing. If you run away from it, if you feel aversion and it's tough, you can also look at that and notice the aversion. See, at this stage, you can actually move your meditation object from breath to those things if it works for you. It is actually one way um, in this practice that you can deal with pain, taking it on as a meditation object, even if it's for a little while, and watch how it responds to when you observe it. And what often happens is that it disappears or it just gets less strong. See, what happens is the way our mind and our stories about ourselves wraps itself around obstacles becomes the thing that is causing the pain. I mean, I'll tell you, I've been in therapy. <laughs> and I call those years I was in therapy um, talking meditations. And I was just sharing all the stuff that was in my life, you know, things in the relationships and how I felt about myself. And it's amazing how just talking about it and noticing what it's doing, it just makes it sound sometimes absurd. I would just go like, why am I thinking about this that, this way? And then it, it just, the power of it would just go away. And certainly talking to somebody was really great. But you know, you can also kind of talk to yourself. Now, one thing I want to point out, and you'll see this in the interludes of the Mind Illuminated book, is there are different types of mental models that are shared to help you understand and grok these um, concepts in the stages. And one of them I want to point to um, is the mental model of our conscious mind and the subconscious and where we are in um in our in our world we think of ourselves as one self but in this um other mental model we are made up of many selves many minds or sub minds and those sub minds are throwing up material over and over again in our meditation. So as we are meditating, we are seeing the contents of all the different selves that we are, and they can talk to each other. They can even, you know, reason out things and notice things that just sound crazy and be like, okay, you know what? We don't need to pay attention to that anymore because that's just crazy. <laughs> and wow, look at that. Now I feel better. So that's how it works. And this part of the journey as the skilled meditator, you'll be engaging with this type of content quite a bit. And this is all part of uh, getting to the next big um, step where um, once you're over, done with stages four through six, you become an adept meditator. And then the, the journey there is going from all of those emotions to tranquility and equanimity. So we'll cover that in a couple of weeks. Um, oh, actually in a couple of months, that'll be January and February. <laughs> so I'm really excited to share that with you all. But for now, we're going to um, really stick with um, attention and awareness and keeping those both in our session. And we'll also in stages five and six, which I'll go over more um, deeply in January is how we use our bodily sensations to stabilize our attention. And we don't have to wait until January. Let me just tell you right now. Um, another way 
that you can keep your attention stable, besides also using your awareness, is to become aware of the sensations of your entire body with your breath. So one practice you can do in stage five is you can move your attention from your breath to your stomach and just practice doing that. And then you can keep the sensations of your stomach in your awareness while you come back to your breath. Just one way to practice having more awareness. So that's just another thing that I'll uh, put out there. Now I just want to keep it simple for now. There's so much more to explore with stage four. And if you have more questions, I want to encourage you to read the book, um, The Mind Illuminated in stage four. There are a lot of really awesome um, appendices in the back that cover some, many of the questions that might be coming up right now for you. Um, and before I move on to meditation, are there any questions or thoughts you guys would like to share? Um, I just have one quick question. Okay. Um, I haven't gotten in the book to stage five yet, but I think I just want to clarify that um, like at the beginning of the book, like in stages one through three, you kind of go from paying attention to like the breath in the whole body. And then eventually you start focusing just on the sensations of your nose. Is, is that just, just to describing help? the four step transition, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. And is that just to help like strengthen your focus? And then the ideas in stage five is like, once you have a strong enough focus, you can start kind of adding I guess more sensations back in, so adding the belly as well. Um, but what that does is it is an actual exercise of using your awareness. Okay. So in these stages, um, one through three, you're really focusing on stabilizing your attention. And now in stages four through six, you're bringing in awareness more. It's really about the discovery of awareness. One thing that Chula Dasa said is that we have in the society, awareness deficit disorder. <laughs> awareness deficit disorder, as in we don't really use our awareness nearly enough. And so using the sensations of the stomach and then holding those sensations while you return to your breath is one way you can expand your awareness or even just experiment with getting to know it for people who have a hard time with understanding what it is. Does that make sense? Okay, great. And again, stages one through three, I just want to also um, just emphasize that it's not about, you know, just being a novice. I mean, I'm having to go to these stages all the time. In fact, um, I've had, I've had plenty of time in stages seven through 10. That's been my primary practices for the past uh, few years. But I've been discovering things about the practices and those stage and the insights that make me want to just go and do a lot of those practices of just focusing on the breath and really stabilizing my attention. So just know that these stages are really guides for different levels of insight. And sometimes you spiral through these insights and you return to them over and over again. So I just want to um, just emphasize that. Um, Seb, is there anything you wanted to add? Yeah, uh, last class, uh, I really liked the answer to the question, like, you know, stages one through three, how do you know when you feel some competency? And you mentioned, you know, hey, can you can you meditate without mind wandering for five to 10 minutes? Um, I, I, what's a, what's kind of a similar guidance through for stages four through six? Oh, I love that you um, bring that up again. I actually looked up these for all the different stages because of your question. Um, just so just to as a reminder, so for stages, for stage two and three, stage two is um, you've mastered it when you're able to not mind wander for 10 to 15 breaths. Stage three is when you're not mind wandering and you keep your attention on your breath for 15 minutes. So I just wanted to correct that. It's not five to 10 minutes. It's actually 15 minutes. And um, I didn't have the information the last time. So um, here it is. Now stages 
four, five, and six are um, are different. They're not um, like as gross and specific as stages two and three. Um, stage four is the ability to hold focus on the breath for 15 to 30 minutes with few gross distractions. Okay, so there is minutes for the stage four, but with few gross distractions, you're dealing much more with subtle distractions. And then with stage five, you're increasing your mindfulness and clarity over extended sits. Okay, so that's where the number of minutes starts to go away. Um, your mindfulness, like I was just talking about, sati, you can feel and sense more. You have more clarity of mind. You're dealing with these purifications and dealing with obstacles. And you can feel your mind becoming more powerful. So that's the sense you get from stage five. Stage six, stable, vivid awareness. So you get a lot more clarity of the things that you're observing. Minimal, subtle distractions. So subtle distractions and dullness is what we're dealing with with these three stages. And by the time you get to stage six, you have much less subtle distractions. And you're heading right into the unified mind. You have almost no distractions. So that's stage six. And again, we'll be talking more about the two stages next time. Um, but does that help? Is that useful? Yeah, it's very helpful. Okay. okay, great. So um, I'll just state one more thing I like to do, the insight and experience for each stage. So, so stage four, the experience you have is the uh, ability to maintain continuous focus is kind of what you're dealing with, but you still have subtle distractions pulling your attention away. And the insight you get is you start to understand the dynamics of how gross distractions work and how your mind is still unsettled. You still feel that raging ocean. And you get a deeper understanding of how to manage those large distractions. So again, with Gail and I just wanted to have encourage you to look at the introspective awareness and look at what's happening there. Same thing with you, Seb. Now, that's the experience and insight, maintaining continuous focus and deeper understanding of large distractions and how that works in your mind. Stage five, in your experience, you experience more stable attention but now you're dealing with subtle dullness. Dullness is when you want to fall asleep. That's the realm of forgetting. <laughs> you go from forgetting and falling asleep to the subtle versions of this. And that creeps in, making your mindfulness less vivid. So the things you're looking at, you see less of the details. It's like dim, like more black and white. Um, that's the experience of stage five. And then the insight you get is you discover the difference between subtle dullness and true mindfulness. Now, a lot of people get stuck at stage five when they're meditating and they think they've attained um, the, the joy and equanimity of the higher stages. But actually what they, they are, they've, they've kind of blocked themselves from discovering a whole new path. Subtle dullness feels really great, but your mind is not clear. You're not paying attention to everything. You don't have a clarity or vividness. So that's the insight you get from stage five is realizing there's a whole other world to discover with true mindfulness versus subtle dullness. And that dullness can trick you into thinking you are more focused than you actually are. Finally, stage six. Your experience is exclusive attention on the breath. So you've really gotten that attention on the breath down. And the subtle distractions are almost entirely subdued. They're almost gone. And here it comes from that insight in stage six. You deepen your awareness of how even very subtle distractions can dis detract from the deeper states, even the very subtle, the very fine distractions. And you're able to refine your ability to maintain focus with even with those things without losing mindfulness. So, because you're really dealing with increasing our mindfulness with attention and awareness and bringing in awareness deepening that helps you deal with the more subtle distractions so you're just rooting all that out okay all right and i hope that these simple things that i've 
uh, concept to put together, help you understand that very deep book that you all may have in front of you. <laughs> and that's the purpose. As again, there's so much more to talk about and explore. But my purpose here is to make manageable reading those chapters of the book and to discover your practice and the mind, mind that you have. Okay. So it is 6.30. We're going to obviously have a 15-minute meditation. And I will guide you through the first part. This time, um, we're not going to have a sound going. <laughs> I've turned that off. And because now we are skilled meditators, right? Um, OK. So be here now. Be ready to, to get into your practice. We're going to be dealing with Increasing your awareness and dealing with distraction comfortably with your, your spine settled like boulders on top of each other, well balanced. Okay, 15 minutes setting the timer. Starting now. Here we are. A four step prep. Notice the sounds around you and the context where we are. And then bring it closer to the sensations of your body. And here, your body is where we'll play with your awareness today. from the point of view of your breath. So you'll come in a little closer. Here we are at the third step with your chest and your breathing, the movement of your shoulders as you breathe. Finally, you come to the fourth step, narrowing your attention around your nose and the breath there. And um, as you deal with distractions, know that you can bring your attention and narrow it down here whenever you are become aware that you are distracted. So let's just stay here. And whatever you need to do, whether it's to count or to follow your breath, staying with the in and out of your breath, or to connect, noticing the differences in your in and out breath. Do those things to stabilize your attention. And as much as you can, stabilize your attention. Also, stabilize your awareness, being aware of your body same time as you're aware of your breath at the tip of your nose. And notice how being aware of your body sensations may even help stabilize you further as you use your awareness to stabilize your attention.
And if you find your breath becoming very stable, try bringing your attention down to your stomach for a little while and hold your tension there. Now, try bringing your attention back to your breath when you're feeling ready and keep the sensations of your stomach breathing in your awareness. This will help you to get a deeper sense of awareness and how it works. And if at any time you're feeling pain or any type of other distraction, you may find it helpful to also use that as a meditation object for a little while and then return to your breath.
Okay. Slowly come back. Okay. So while we have um, one minute to to chat, um, anyone want to share how that went for them? Playing with adding uh, more awareness into your practice and the body sensations. Are you finding uh, your attention to stabilize a bit more? Oh, okay, so you guys are nodding. Interesting. You want to tell me more about that, Galen? Oh, um, I, it was just, uh, it was interesting to allow more um, information to come in. So like allowing more of the body information to come in. And then um, I have like a, I have an air like filter next to me, which is pretty loud. So that was like taking up most of my, I feel like awareness because um, it, it was just very present. Um, but then I tried to let in like the traffic noises as well, like from beyond, from beyond that. Um, and it's interesting how those would generally feel like distractions to me, but like this allowing of them, they actually, I almost had like a sense of ownership over the experience, mm -hmm. um, which made it much easier, I think, to uh, to focus, right? Because I wasn't trying to push them out. Oh, isn't that profound? <laughs> that actually letting everything in kind of made it, you feel like you had more, um, more of a handle, right? On all the different things happening in your world. <laughs> That's great, great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Seb, did you um, want to say anything? Yeah, the, just the two things that stood out in that session for me. Um, one was the, I really like the stomach uh, awareness and uh, uh, I hadn't practiced that before and I found that really helpful with combined with the breath. And then the other thing I, I hadn't really thought, thought much about, but it felt, felt like it came out in the practice was the starting to distinguish a little bit between dull and I think you mentioned gross uh, distractions and or dullness. And uh, yeah, I really, it's, it started to tease out a little bit more in that meditation session. So I really, I found this very helpful. Oh, neat. So you have to explore a little bit the difference between distraction and dullness. That's great. In 15 minutes, you're able to distinguish that and also experience bodily sensations and awareness. Very cool. Okay. Well, now you guys have some um, useful tools and concepts in your tool belts for the rest of your practice. And um, I just wanted to just before we close, I wanted to share that I'm actually doing a um, special session on using uh, meditation in our practice to actually deal with post-election stuff and the holidays. So um, I, I, if you don't, if you're not on my email list, I'd love for you to to join. Um, and I think. Um, how do I join? How do you join my mail email list? If you go to co-caring.org, you'll get my um, email, and I can um, if you send me info at co-caring.org, I can give you information about that. But we're doing a really great set of practices with Joanna Macy's Active Hope practice and nonviolent communications, and using me meditation all throughout, so you can be very skilled in your communications with all your uh, relatives during the holidays and the lovely conversations and discussions to pop up um, uncomfortably around the holiday table. So that'll be December 10th, Tuesday, December 10th. And if you're interested, info at co-caring.org. All right. Well, have a great night and thank you so much for coming and um, hopefully we'll see you next time. We're not going to have a class in December, but we will fourth uh, Monday in January and fourth Monday in February. So see you then and happy holidays.